Over the last 10 or so videos, we've incrementally solved or figured out which of the 100 cities we should consider traveling to based on some personal criteria, well, sort of. The code we've written up to this point is fine, but it could be significantly improved by using function composition, which is what we'll do in this video. Before we start coding, let's quickly review the incremental steps we've taken up to this point. First, we converted the temperatures from Kelvin to a more familiar unit of measure, Fahrenheit. Then we calculated a score for each city based on its cost and internet speed, and then we filtered the cities based on their weather. Then we sorted the cities by their scores, and lastly, we narrowed down the list to just the top 10 cities. In this video, we'll combine all these steps we just reviewed into one nice data pipeline, and here's how we'll do it. I'll create a new constant named top cities, which I'll set to the value returned by calling Ramda's pipe function. Pipe is one of Ramda's functions for composing or joining pure functions together to effectively create new functions. Pipe should be passed two or more pure functions that you'd like to compose or join together. In this video, we'll actually pass in quite a few functions. To start, I'd like to get rid of the intermediate value updated cities, which I'll just comment out for now. Now, this bit of code right here, we'll use as the first parameter to the pipe function. So I'll call Ramda's map function passing in the update temperature function. Now, since we queried the update temperature function, we can perform partial application by passing in just the first parameter, the Kelvin to Fahrenheit function, but we'll leave off the last parameter to the update temperature function, the city. Additionally, we'll leave off the last parameter to map, which would be the array of cities. You'll see why we're leaving this last parameter off in a moment. Next, we'll get rid of this intermediate value, filtered cities, then we'll add this bit of logic as the next function to pipe. So I'll call Ramda's filter function, passing in just the filter by weather function. We'll leave off the last parameter, the array to act on, which we can easily do because all of Ramda's functions are curried. Now we'll get rid of this intermediate value, scored cities, but we'll add this bit of code as the next function to pipe. So I'll call Ramda's map function again, partially applying just the first parameter, the calc score function. Next, we'll get rid of this intermediate value, sorted cities, but we'll use this bit of code right here as the next parameter to the pipe function. So I'll call Ramda's sort with function, passing in the first parameter, the array of sorting rules, which will have sorted in descending order based on the city's score. And again, I'll leave off the last parameter, which is the array to act on. Now let's get rid of this intermediate value, the top 10 constant, but we'll use this bit of code right here as the next parameter to the pipe function. So I'll call Ramda's take function, partially applying the first parameter, which is the number of elements to take from the array. And again, we'll leave off the last parameter, the array to act on. Okay, that composes most of the intermediate steps into one data pipeline. Now the pipe function returns a function which we can call to execute this new data pipeline. When we call the function return by pipe, we'll pass in the parameter that the first function in the pipeline is expecting. Well, the first function in our case is this map function, which is just expecting the city's array. So at the end of pipe, I'll call the return function passing in the city's array. What we're doing here might seem a bit fuzzy, so for clarity, let's step through what happens when we call our newly composed function. On this line here, map will get called with the cities array passed in here. What's returned from this function call is an updated array of cities with their temperatures in Fahrenheit. This new returned array is then piped into the next function, the filter function. In other words, the return value from the function on this line is fed as the input to the function on this line. Calling filter returns a smaller array of cities. Next, the filtered cities array is then piped into the map function, where the city scores are calculated and returned in a new array. The new array with the calculated scores are then piped into the sort with function, which returns a new sorted array. The sorted array is then piped into Ramda's take function, which just returns the first 10 cities. Let's go ahead and console log the constant top cities, then we'll run the code. Okay, cool. It appears to be the same list we had earlier. 
So what's the benefit of building a data pipeline like we just did? Well, here's my take. Using function composition like this allows you to build sophisticated logic in a nice, simple, expressive, and readable way, and it's easy to change or extend as needed. In fact, let's go ahead and extend this data pipeline right now. Currently, our list of cities printed in the console isn't very easy to consume. It's just raw, ugly data. Let's use the text table library to nicely format our top 10 cities in the console. First, I'll go ahead and install the text table library by keying npm install text table with the save option. Next, I'll pull in our new text table library into our file as the constant named table. Table is a function that expects an array of arrays that looks something like this. So to use this function, we'll need to transform our array of objects into an array of arrays, which as you probably know by now, we can easily do with Ramdas map function. So let's call Ramdas map function and we'll pass in a function named city to array, which doesn't exist yet, but we'll create it right now. City to array will take one parameter, the city, then I'll use destructuring to unpack the name, country, score, cost, temp, and internet speed from the city. Now I'll just return an array that includes these constants. Next, in the data pipeline, I'll pass in the newly imported table function. Okay, let's run this code again, and our top 10 cities looks a lot nicer. It would be nice to have some column headers for this table, so let's add that. Just before the call to the table function, I'll add a call to Ramda's prepend function. Prepend takes a value to prepend to an array. I'll key in a constant named interesting props, which doesn't exist, but we'll create it right now. The constant interesting props will just be an array with the column names to display in the same order as you see returned by the city to array function. So name, country, score, cost, temp, and internet. Okay, let's run this code again. And it looks pretty good. A few videos back, I asked you to pay attention to the sequencing of parameters in Ramda's functions. Let's go ahead and review the pattern Ramda uses. If a Ramda function needs to be passed functions as parameters, those functions will be passed as the first parameters. A couple examples of this that you see in our data pipeline is map and filter. They both take multiple parameters, but the function comes first. If there are multiple data parameters needed in a Ramda function, you'll find the data parameters fall after any function parameters and before the data to act on, which is always the last parameter. A good example of this is Ramda's reduce function. Reduce takes a reducer function as the first parameter, then it takes an initial accumulator value as the next parameter, then it takes the array to act on as the last parameter. So in summary, Ramda's parameter sequences functions first, then configuration data, and lastly, the data to act on. Okay, so why does the sequencing of parameters matter? Well, because when you're using Ramda, you're often combining function composition and partial application like we did here in nearly every line of our data pipeline. Essentially, we use partial application on every Ramda function in our pipeline, and we left out the last parameter to each of these functions, the data to act on, which in each of these cases was an array of cities. If the data to act on wasn't the last parameter of each of these functions, it would have been very difficult to build a data pipeline like we did here. So in summary, the design decisions or preferences you see in Ramda like currying, function purity, immutability, parameter sequencing, and composition all work together to allow you to build nice expressive data pipelines. Okay, this example could be improved in the following ways. Earlier, I hard-coded my ideal weather conditions, which you see right here. It would be nice and more flexible if you could pass these criteria into the filtered by weather function. There's a similar issue with the calc score function where I hard-coded a couple of weight factors for the cost, the 100 you see here, and the internet speed, the 20 you see here. It would be better if we could pass these weight factors into the calc score function. So here's my challenge to you. Try and refactor these functions to support passing the weather criteria and weight factors into these functions. Now remember, it's not as simple as just adding more parameters to these functions and there's more than one way to do it. You can get the code you see here in its current state by cloning the repo at github.com slash know then slash ramda tutorial. 
One more thing, if you're interested in learning more about Ramda and functional programming in general, you should take my course, Functional Programming for Beginners with JavaScript. You can find a link to this course with the discount coupon in the description below.